Elon Musk is a threat to their control of Twitter. Indeed, he's already exposing the perversity of the way they think about social media. Welcome to the National Review Channel, your source for facts, rationality, and scintillating hot takes on the latest news. I'm Rich Lowry with your reality check. So Elon Musk's on again, off again, on again, if you're keeping track, acquisition of Twitter is causing a freak out on the left, largely because he wants to allow unfettered free speech on his social media platform. This is a complaint that would have made no sense in the context of about a decade ago when the center left was still robustly pro free speech. That's not the case as it is a libertarian-ish business leader is saying he wants to take an important forum for public argument and advocacy about politics, about culture, about morality, and allow as many varied and clashing views as possible. And the reaction of a lot of commentators is, this man must be stopped. A lot of his critics say, you know what, when Elon Musk takes over Twitter, it might affect the outcome of the midterms, which is an implicit acknowledgement that the current Twitter rules have political consequences, and obviously they do, or every progressive in America wouldn't be up in arms about this and hoping there's some way to stop it. The critics say, you know what, Elon Musk might hand down arbitrary edicts about what's allowed on Twitter and what's not. Come on, compared to what? I mean, what do they actually think has been going on? Did it make any rational sense for Twitter to try to suppress a totally legitimate story about Hunter Biden's laptop prior to the 2020 election? Does it make any rational sense for Twitter when it comes to trans issues to suppress one side of the debate, not allow, allow them to use their preferred terms and not allow them to express their sincere, deeply held beliefs. Try to go on Twitter and say biological males are males. Try to go do it. I dare you. Does it make any rational sense for Twitter to have suspended a conservative satirical site, the Babylon Bee, or crack down an account that just posts already public videos, the libs of TikTok? it'd be much easier to accept the idea that it's a result of some sort of neutral criteria that say Marjorie Taylor Greene was permanently suspended from Twitter if a member of the squad ever happened to be suspended too. Or it'd be easier to take the flagging of conservatives for alleged misinformation if say Stacey Abrams and all her supporters were ever flagged for their distortions around the Georgia election system, but it doesn't happen. Twitter is run as if it is beholden to a bunch of hyper online progressive folks who live in a deeply blue jurisdiction and are calling the shots, which obviously is the case. Another count against Elon Musk is, oh, the Twitter employees hate you. I say, good. Good. If we agree that Twitter is an important public forum, which it is, it shouldn't be run by rules set by a small group of people devoted to vindicating their ideological beliefs and their fashionable obsessions. But that's not how this sh should work. So look, will there be challenges for Elon Musk? Yeah. You know, the lines have to be drawn somewhere, and he does has to have to guard against being as arbitrary as the prior regime, but hopefully he will set out much more clearly and specifically what is permitted and what is not, and he'll allow people to have finer grain settings about what they want to see and what they don't want to see on Twitter instead of handing down these Sanhedrin-like decisions about hotly contested political and social issues. Whatever Musk does, is not gonna be the liking to the liking of everyone. It's especially not gonna be to the liking of progressives who've gotten used to working their will with Twitter. You know what, if they don't like it though, they can take the advice they've given to conservatives disenchanted with Twitter's decisions and rules over the years, and they can go out 
and they can, quote, build their own Twitter. Check out, by the way, my video on the Biden student loan forgiveness program and why it is flagrantly, indeed ridiculously, illegal.